So what is your image of God, my friends? You have this big, grumpy old man or woman sitting up there pointing a finger down at you with a furrowed brow. You have a hard taskmaster of a God expecting more and more of you. Maybe you think God's overlooked you and focused on others. Maybe you think God's so far away he doesn't care anything about you. Maybe you think God is out there measuring everything in your life and finding it insufficient. Maybe you see God as holding your face to the fire of emotional pain and grief. Well, let's see what Jesus has to say. If you are able... Today, the gospel reading is from Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through chapter 3, verses 6. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing the, what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food. He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was not made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. A lot of our religious training in the Christian church, especially when we are young, is intended to keep us in line with cultural norms and that are redefined in religious terms. Acting properly and predictably, well, is helpful to a well-ordered society. And churches have long seen its, their functions as trying to make sure that that was what happened. I think a lot of our church training is about making us behave like little boy, good boys and girls. We use the Bible and religion to help people stay clear of drugs and alcohol and pornography and overeating, well, mostly. Prideful ways, jealousy, laziness, rule breaking and selfishness. Mostly we use it to keep kids from running wild and just having fun. And this turns into a mass of social rules and norms that we like to enforce on other people. What's your view about this? Do you see the church as a way of controlling people, helping them stay well-ordered, avoiding the worst of sins? A lot of times we'll hear folks pointing to John Wesley and saying, yes, he... <clears throat> certainly saw religion as a means of changing people's social behavior. Our general rules state that we are to do the good we can do, avoid the evil we're prone to, and use all the means of grace. But it is vitally important to see that John Wesley did not believe we were capable of these things on our own. 
He knew we could not live holy lives only by re- except by receiving loving grace from God. Grace given us even though we're way off the charts in the things we do that we shouldn't. He knew that for us to receive God's grace, we needed to see God as loving us no matter what or who we are or what we've done every day. Now, think about that. God loves us, all of us, and all of them, no matter who, what we have done, said, or been. And he doesn't love us conditionally so that, well, I'm going to love you. Robert, do you think God's going to love you as long as you do exactly what God wants you to later? Do you think he's going to take it away? Right. God's not going to take this away because we keep messing up. God's love is there for us, always. So, whoever you think is a miserable sinner, of course, I got a long list, you probably do too. God loves that person, all of them. God is not here to demand of them that they change, so much as that they would know that God loves them. First, because if you know that God loves you, then something can change. Something can grow. Something can become healthy and joyful. So now, our text. Jesus is out walking with the disciples on a Sabbath. It wasn't Sunday, folks. It was, you know, Saturday. He's walking around with his disciples, and they're walking along through the grain fields, and they're pulling the grains off and chewing them. According to Jewish law, that's working on the Sabbath, and it's forbidden. So the rule folks are right out there saying, you're violating these rules. And Jesus says, well, don't you remember in Scripture, David and his companions were hungry, and they went to the ark and the temple, and they ate the precious food in there that no one was supposed to eat. They broke all those rules, and God still loves David. That's one of those things that the rule folks don't want to focus on. And to drive home the point, he says, the Sabbath was made for humans, for people, for us, not us for serving the Sabbath. Now, most of us tend to define ourselves in terms of our work. And we see ourselves as serving the master of work. And God says, no, no, all of this is here for you. Your work is to serve, is for your blessing. You don't serve your work. Hmm, now that's pretty offensive. See, God has given us practices and rules and guidelines and commandments to make us not slaves to the rules and practices but that those rules and practices might help us live more fully and joyfully in relationship with God. They're to be understood as a means of grace, a way in which God's love is given to us. If we follow rules, sometimes they can help form us so that we reflect God's will and enable, it enables us to live more fully in that love of God. And there are times when we follow the rules and there are times when we don't. And that's all of us. And always the answer is, am I following the higher law of love when I follow or do not follow the rules? If somebody's children are starving and there is no other way, it is not a sin to steal food. You know that? Now, people in the legal system would tell us that that's, well, still illegal. And, well, it may be. But the law of love 
is what governs. And then to demonstrate this, Jesus sees a man who is crippled, and he says, come to me. And he heals him right there on the Sabbath. And healing, like, you know, practicing medicine, right, is against the rules on the Sabbath. And Jesus says again, the Sabbath is intended for goodness, for wholeness, for life. Not as a rule to oppress and lead to evil. So today we have many Christians who, well, <laughs> our duty to God may end 55 minutes into the church service on Sunday morning. And you know, we're kind of a, a, a nation of Sabbath breakers. It's, uh, you know, part of our culture now. And we forget the first four commandments uh, given to Moses. Remember what those are? We're to love God, to have no other gods, to don't make images of some other god, don't go after things that take us away from God. Keep the Sabbath so that we can be attentive to God. All of those things are intended us to keep us connected with God's love. So when we turn that around and we use it as an act, to cut people off. It's exactly the opposite of what God had in mind. God wants us to make space in our lives to be with God. That's the purpose of those commandments. And in the name of those, instead, we judge others and we follow rules. You see, how we view God is revealed in the ways in which we live and practice daily living. Are we harsh and cruel, rule-addicted people? Do we demand others follow rules that leave them suffering and excluded even from basic necessities? Do we act piously while preventing healing from taking place in our lives and the lives of others? These are challenging things. And these things have very real consequences in how we treat people that we meet on the street, how we treat our political expression, how we live and treat poor people in general. How do we keep those commandments? With the love of God in our hearts and on our lips, or do we keep them as a means to control and dominate other people? Choices reflect our view of who God is. Harsh taskmaster or one who's love. Divine loving, seeking to heal our lives and our relationships with God and one another. So when you run on to somebody who is into the rules, even if they hurt other people, let us have compassion first because their image of God is a harsh, harsh taskmaster. So show them God's love. Show them that they are loved deeply. Ah, so Jesus gets us to this place of loving even our enemies. But we could start by respecting those who are different from us, those who are hmm, maybe addicted to the rules, maybe because their God is a mean, nasty tyrant. So our job is to show what? The love of Jesus. It is so simple. May your love be filled and lifted up by the love of God. May your love grow and expand with the love that Jesus gives you. And may that love extend to others that in everything you do and say, Jesus may be glorified. Amen. Now Joshua's got up to the organ.
reading something that I just found from Mother Teresa. Christ says, I know you through and through. I know everything about you. The hairs of your head I have numbered. Nothing in your life is unimportant to me. I have followed you through the years and I have always loved you, even in your wanderings. I know every one of your problems. I know your need and your worries. And yes, I know all your sins. But I tell you again that I love you. Not for what you have or haven't done. I love you for you, for the beauty and dignity my Father gave you by creating you in God's own image.